I'm Jim, and this is Solomon Seal here, uh, Polygonatum biflorum, and then um, over here, this little one is False Solomon Seal. We'll look at both of these separately, but they're growing right next to each other. They often do. One of the ways you can tell is you look underneath, and on the the true Solomon Seal, the Polygonatum, you'll either see flowers or berries. But do you see any? I don't see any flowers or berries here. But I do see little stems. I can run my hand underneath and feel these little stems and I look and they look, look like little upside down Y's because they're biflorum, it's just two little berries or two little flowers. Um, if it was multiflorum, there would be more stems, they wouldn't look like Y's, they would look like um, Y's with extra lines. And um, I use this plant a lot, it's one of the very important plants that I use for many musculoskeletal issues. And I, I'm tempted to say that it's the root that I use, but it's not really a root. Herbalists will always call it the root. They'll say Solomon seal root this and Solomon seal root that, but it's a rhizome and rhizomes are underground stems with these little rootlets that go off of it. But we'll just say the roots. Um, so I gather the roots and what do I use them for? I use them for joint issues um, and with two main patterns. So joint issues that are caused by or aggravated by dryness uh, and heat. So dryness and inflammation in the joints is the, the specific situations that I would use uh, Solomon seal. So how would you tell that that's happening to you? Well, one thing that might happen is, let's say this is a bone and this is a bone. And here's your joint. And there's cartilage here and cartilage here, kind of as padding um, so that the bones don't rub up on each other. And then there's tendons and ligaments holding the muscles to the bones and holding the joint together. And then this little cavity here is surrounded by a synovial membrane and inside it is synovial fluid. And that is what lubricates the joint. So as it moves around, there's lubrication. And as the cartilage moves on the other cartilage, it, they don't s cause much structural damage. But if that were to dry out, if that were to not be in enough sufficient quantity or the right consistency, then what would happen is you would get friction and the cartilage would start to scratch on each other. And then you would start to get structural damage. And the structural damage would lead to inflammation and the inflammation would lead to joint pain. And so you'd have inflammatory joint pain. And what many people will do in this is if they're conventional medicine users, they might take some Advil or some Tylenol or some aspirin or some kind of prescription drug. And if they're into herbs, they might take turmeric. And turmeric would make a lot of sense because it's an anti-inflammatory. It's really spectacular anti-inflammatory. But if the reason for the inflammation is dryness causing friction, causing structural damage, it's causing the inflammation, and you use an anti-inflammatory, that does nothing to address the underlying issue of the dryness. And we suspect, we think, that somehow Salmon Seal affects lubrication in the joints. Um, how would you know if this is going on? Like if you had joint pain, how would you know that there was friction? Well, sometimes you just move around and you move your head around and you move your wrists around and you can actually hear them going... it right now. Yeah, I totally hear that. Listen to that. That's amazing, isn't it? It's totally crazy. Um, by the way, I don't know whether you can see them. There is a ton of mosquitoes here. Um, just so you know if I'm doing this a little bit. So Solomon Seal, through some unknown mechanism, who knows how or why, I don't think it's the mucilage. People say that, some people say I say that, but I don't know what it is, but Solomon Seal has some mechanism of seemingly lubricating the joint. I can tell that because frequently when you give people Solomon Seal, that sense of friction, that <laughs> even that noise and that, that sensation will lessen once you start using the Solomon Seal. So that's one way um, that you can see Solomon Seal working for dryness and inflammation causing joint pain. Um, another uh, thing that you could think of is when uh, Matthew Wood writes about Salmon Seal and about the tendons and it adjusting tendons uh, and I would say ligaments and fascia and other connective tissues. Uh, there are a lot of mosquitoes. <laughs> Wanna take a break? Um, 
No, let's keep going. There, you know what? Sometimes in life there are mosquitoes. And they may be actual mosquitoes just biting the heck out of you, but they might be other things. They might be the patriarchy or contrails or like your neighbors or your family. Maybe it's yourself and your own just incessant thinking is like mosquitoes flying around and making you insane, but we gotta get through it, you know? You can't just like poof, make all the mosquitoes be gone. I mean, someone could come in here with a fogger and destroy all the mosquitoes, but that's not really gonna help because it'll, it'll do other stuff that we don't want. So right now we're gonna deal with the mosquitoes. <laughs> Wood says that um, Salmon seal will help to adjust ligaments, whether they're too stretched out or too tight. Now, how would that be? Maybe it's amphoteric. Amphoteric means uh, an herb that has the ability to adjust to what the body needs. And some herbs are totally amphoteric, like yarrow is a great example. But with this, I don't think that that's the case. Um, because amphoteric is also a, a, a word that herbalists use sometimes when they don't know what's going on and they can just say, oh, I know, it must be amphoteric. But I thought about this and I thought about um, I thought about belts at thrift stores, right? So you're in the thrift store and you see this belt and you're like, oh, look at that belt. And then you touch it and it's like really stiff. Like you try to bend it like that. And if you pull on it, you can see it get little tears on it because it has no give. And the reason it has no give is because it's all dried out. And so connective tissues that are dry lack pliability. And if they were stretched out and they got dry, then they don't want to restore to normal length. And if they were all bunched up and they got dry, they don't want to relax and not even relax, but loosen and restore to their normal length. So when you restore moisture, you restore pliability. And when you restore pliability, things that are too tight will loosen up and things that are too loose will tighten up. So that is what I speculate that Salmon Seal is doing for joint issues. Um, I generally use a tincture and um, I use between 10 and 20 drops a few times a day. I kind of like the three to five times a day thing. Even though that's hard for some people, I still shoot for that. Um, but it could be two or three times a day. You could take more, you could take less. It's kind of nice to start at the lower end and see if that works for you. There's a lot of people I know who thinks that, that just, that's just too low a dose. And so they take 30 drops and I say, no, I'll try taking like 15. And they try taking 15 and it works just as good as 30. And now they're using half the amount of tincture, which means they're using half the amount of plants, which is really ecologically sustainable. Um, when we gather this and we're using the root, um, we want to think about sustainability because it would be easy for this to become a very popular plant and for us to um, kind of pick it out of existence in a lot of areas. So we're going to look at the root and how I like to gather it um, up close. Yay. Here up close, you can see the little stems that the flowers and the berries run. And a lot of times what I'll do is if I can't tell just from looking at it and I don't see the berries, I'll just run my finger underneath of it like that and I'll feel that they're there and then I'll double check by looking. Um, and then down here, look, we can see the root just right here at the top of the ground. And this is kind of like the perfect way to gather it. It's not really deep in the ground. And I could, um, with my fingers, I can just start to uncover the root without even taking it out of the ground, right? So here's this plant. And each one of these knuckles it's ironic if you're into the doctrine of signatures and you're thinking about joint issues, look at that, that's really cool. Um, each one of these knuckles is a year's growth. So in a year, this, this biflorum, which grows slower than some of the other species and has the smaller roots, only grew this much. And the year before, only this much. So if I want to harvest this plant, the way that I gather it is I think like, well, here's where it's going to start growing next year. Here's all of its past lives. And I want to give it enough food. So I might take my knife and clip it there. Sometimes I just use my finger. And then I can reach with my finger and I can get underneath of the root and I can kind of trail back along the length of the root and then pull up the length of root. And there is the salmon steel root. I can then cover this back up and the plant will continue to grow with absolutely no impact. But what might happen is where I broke the root or where I cut the root, um, another shoot will come out. And from this same root, there'll be two above ground plants. And that means that more um, flowers form and more berries form and more seeds fall on the ground. And over time, if you harvest like this, you'll actually have more Salomon seal growing in the areas that you're harvesting from, which is very cool. Salomon seal. And it looks really similar. One of the things that I found um, 
routinely noticeable about it without having to look for berries or flowers is the stem is usually a little bit thicker. The leaves, usually the, the veins on them are a little bit more pronounced. They're a little bit deeper uh, and just more visible. Sometimes it seems to have a darker green, but not always. If this plant had flowers or had berries on it, they would be terminal. So at the end of the, um, the plant, but there's none here. So if I look underneath, there's nothing, and then there's nothing. So how do I know for sure that this is false Solomon seal, uh, Smilacina something or another, SPA is what we say instead of something or another, or maybe SPA stands for something or another. Yeah. Um, I just happen to know what it is because I, I'm around it all the time. But I could also, if I wanted, I could look here and do the same thing with the root. So you can feel in the dirt around the stem. And, uh, oh, look, this is the shoot for next year's plant right there. So next year, that's where it's going to be growing. So I'll cover that back up. But that means that the other side of the root is around this way. So, oh, I think I feel it. So again, I'm going to, oh, this root is really short. Oh, no, there it is. Give it a little bit of space and then break it and then pull it out and then cover everything up because that's nice. And you'll notice when you look at the two roots that the false Salomon seal root is much more yellow colored. Um, the true Salomon seal root where it has its indentations, its seals, like a stamp that you would put on a, an old piece of parchment that you're going to give to someone. Uh, on the false Salomon seal, they has the knobbiness, but it doesn't have the indented seal. So um, sometimes the true Salomon seal roots will be smaller and the false Salomon seal roots a, roots a lot bigger. Other time the, um, the size can be different. So this isn't typical just by looking at the size of them, but the coloration is very typical. After you get eaten alive <laughs> on your plant walk, you can just take plantain, go a couple chews, and this. stick it on your face. If you chew up enough, it'll stay there. Maybe. There you go. Okay, thanks for joining me. Ha 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 